Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think like like you said you think you carry on <laughs> Riven and Camille well more because you're mechanically good at them or because you think they're better to one v nine? I think both mainly, but they're mainly much better to one v nine in my opinion. Like I've played, I've tried playing Fiora and whatnot, and when it gets to time to team fight, I just feel like I don't do anything. I I feel that way on Camille sometimes, but it's probably better than something like Fiora or Jax or something. Okay, I mean that's going to be the question on Riven and Camille as well, though. Like if you can't win five v five, then why are you five v fiving? So not every team fight you're going to win on Riven and Camille. Um, I just say like about playing Riven and Camille, like. I think Riven is more blind pickable. I don't think you can blind pick Camille like ever. Yeah, so. Camille, Camille is so shit to blind pick, but um, I, I, admit, I win most matchups anyway, even if I get counter picked. If they like, pick something, I don't, I don't find I don't find Jax difficult at all. It just it just gets difficult when he gets like two items and I can't win. But As before Camille. that, I always win. Yeah, even even shit like Darius, Maud, I always win anyway. But on Riven, it's much much easier as long as I don't pick like Urgot. I'll win. Okay. What about if they pick something like Volley Bear or if you play Camille and they pick GP and they can play GP well? Um, I've never seen anyone play GP well. I I I think GP versus Camille is easier than Riven versus Camille, in my opinion. Have you played against like any like good tops over um, here? I don't think so. No. Yeah. I okay. mean, That's not not like that, but yeah. Yeah, not like uh, consistently. I, I feel like the people mm. that I play against are pretty, pretty bad. Right. Okay. Although I think I played against Theon last night. I'm not sure if it was actually him, but mm -hmm. I checked his op.gg and he was like challenger a few seasons ago. So maybe. But apart from that, no one else really. Yeah. Okay. This work has grass. What the fuck. Yeah, because he has grass. Like, do He's you actually win level one? Barrier you... and ghost as well. Do you um, win? Like, I win. I, I I probably don't win just because he has barrier. But if he doesn't take barrier, then I win only if he does a specific trading pattern, which is I stack my uh my all my cues, and then he cues into me, and then once my cue comes back up, I kill him with ignite and another combo. But that's the only way I beat him level one. I think you might like if he has bone plating, it makes it imp um. I don't even know if it's impossible. That, that's but... why I stack my cues, so I just proc it with third cue. So you know he has him. bone plating, yeah? I didn't. I didn't know. I assumed he did. You should always just, just check. Running. Just always check. Yeah, because you can check through. I, I'm I'm lazy with that. I don't care who who's on my team, who's on the enemy team, what runes they have. I just play. Well, like bone plating is fucking essential to know about, right? Like when you get into a game. Like, yeah, this will I matter always and... just assume they have it. Yeah, but what about if they don't, right? You can exploit it, so it's, like, important. So, make sure, like, you know what runes they have. Because it will affect, mm. like, how you trade, bro. Like, you're not going to all in if he mm. has bone plating. But if he doesn't, you yeah, can all no. in. I actually think you can win level 1 just because you can get to conquer it pretty quick. And a grass warwick is fucking... Okay, like, he's got two combat summoner spells and your flash might be useless, but... I actually think there's, like, potential for you here. You might just have to, like, proceed your first queue of an auto attack. But I think that's about it. I think you might do well. But if he has bone plating, you have to like respect it, right? Mm -hmm. But we sh yep. we should just know that going into the game. Like, there's no reason not to. It's just like laziness if you don't. Yeah. Which is just the truth of it, right? Mm-hmm. 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 What are you doing as GP, by the way? Because like I've coached like tops before. Um, as Riven, like you're pretty much yeah. only chance to like actually hard win lane is at level one, right? Um, I've been or maybe I've been six. wanting to limit test more more against GP because I'm actually not sure because if they take um bone plating with corrupting, I'm pretty sure you just lose level one. If you have ignite, but, though, you just win like pretty much all the time. Yeah, yeah, true, true. But so you usually just get out sustained uh because of corrupting potion and bone plating. It's really hard to actually trade with them. Yes. So in terms but it's of like... six, it's six. They always. They always die, like, at least once, because they can't heal because mm -hmm. of Ignite. Uh, yeah, generally speaking, yeah, you have chances. It doesn't, like, always just happen, right? Um, yeah, so if you trade with the GP, where it's, like, a 2-3 second trade, of course he's going to win, because of Grasp. Yeah. But if you can all-in him, the Grasp becomes, like, pretty much irrelevant, right? Same with, like, the Warwick in this game. So the move you would make if you actually, like, hard win level 1 on Riven is just to go like this. 
at level one. So like on this come, wave, come as soon as he shows, him, yeah, like, as soon as as soon as oh, he yeah, shows, yeah. you just run behind. And the yeah, actual I fun... usually I usually wait in uh, the third bush up top, and then when the minions get low, I'll walk up and try to like zone them off of the e exp. But mm -hmm. I don't think I can do that against GP. Like some some champions, it's really <clears throat> it's really easy to do against like range champions. But against GP, there's like no way that that's gonna happen. Especially if they're a smart GP, they'll start uh, E start, and then it just doesn't work. But even with Q start and bone plating, it's still very difficult. If GP starts like E against you, right? Like that's that is surely free as fuck. Like he has three barrels, and like after that, it, they're they're so like hard uh, it's, to. It's not every every uh like Viper hates playing against it. I know that at least, and like other river mains as well. So they would never it's, do this it, at level one against an E star. I, I've never seen I've never seen anyone do that. No. Well, it's like good though, right? Like you can see how it's good. Like I've seen mm. it before, and against like if you just win like all ins. If I'm playing GP sitting in this brush, because I can't face check you, right? If I'm playing GP sitting in this brush and all of a sudden you just run here like this, like, I'm in trouble. I might even have to, like, blow flash, depending on, like, how I play it, right? The, um, if you sit in the third brush and GP just chills here and waits for you to show, you can't do anything. Yeah? So this, mm -hmm. because you're already behind him, is actually just more effective. Yeah. If you sit in this brush, he can actually just, like, sit in his safety. Mm -hmm. And if that was the case and you go around here, you quickly catch him, right? Okay. Does that make sense? So I understand, yeah, like, yeah. he might have bone plating, but... Yeah, it, I'm just not sure if, if I win it. I haven't tried enough, because I've had GP, like, not too long ago, and I had fought him level 1, and then I'd, I won the trade, but since it's GP with Corrupting Potion and bone plating, he just out-sustains me. Because I usually... Uh... I'd usually go... I don't, I don't go long 3, usually. It's either Doran's Blade or... Uh, Doran Shield, but if I did go long three, I have no sustain at all apart from the three potions, and I'm extremely, I have like no health because of it. Yeah, I mean, like if you um if you want to win fucking like lane against a GP or something, you would definitely like this. This setup is actually good, right? Because level one you have chances. Um, I'm just gonna ask like, what was the level one like against this GP? Like, were you running at him like this, or were you like fighting in um... this? Like, I don't know how it looks, right? So. I don't remember because it was it wasn't like recent recent but like this it was preseason. Um, mm. I think I just waited in top brush and then like when he went up to the minions, I just fought him in the minions and then I think he just ran away with bone plating. I got like an okay trade and then like queued me. I had control of the wave, but with yes. three corrupting potions, I just kind of got out sustained. And once he hits level two, it's quite difficult to uh, do anything because he just sits on a barrel. This is true, but you should hit two first, right? So this is why, like, you have to like treat level one as if it's like make or break in matchups like that because it's your only chance to win. So if that happens, right, and you fight him here, which is great for you because his minions will hit you, so they're not hitting yours. Your wave will push, and after this happens, you can probably even just sit in this brush, bro. Unless he's watered it, of course, and you just sit here. You don't even worry about like the minions. You just try to like zone him, maybe like spaces Q, and he's kind of fucked. Now, if he wards it, of course, like, you just space his Q again and you just move back. Trying to hit minions and then you go brush. And then as soon as you hit level 2, like, he has to fucking respect it, right? Especially if you get yeah. flash level 1. Like, if you run at him and you stay behind him the whole time, like, you're not running into him and, like, chasing him, right? You always want to be ahead of him, almost. So mm -hmm. you get more auto attacks in and all of a sudden you're going to stack Conqueror quickly. And he props has to flash, like, if he face checks you and shit. So hopefully you can see that, but... let's. I'll, um, I'll definitely try it out. Yeah, hopefully you can see how it works. Maybe even if you've got, like, top laners added, just, like, ask them to fucking try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right, so here's bone plating, right? So that's fucking yeah. very important to know, and that's clean. The Warwick with fucking Grasp. You're keeping track of Grasp here? Yeah? Like, when he has it or not? Um, I'm not usually thinking about that, but, like, yeah, I guess. If he has a Grasp, I'm not going to, like, walk up and give him a free... Yeah, like here, you, here you don't run into him, right? Because yeah, well, I, no cool I mean, it's actually kind of close. If you're like maybe two seconds off your queue here, I think you can actually maybe yeah. run into him. Yeah, like even if yeah, you yeah, I was grass. just waiting. I had I had the wave, I had the wave lead, and my queue was coming up, so I just waited. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, bro. Like, there's like this is almost like a fake cooldown in a way, like early game because fights are gonna be longer. It's not like you one shot him, so. This Q cooldown, even if it was like two seconds here, it's actually going to be relevant for this fight, right? So you would actually play as if it's like off cooldown, if that makes sense. So if yeah, your Q's up in two seconds, you wouldn't actually like click back here. You'd want him to jump on you, because then you're just going to like 
you know, hard win. Even if he, like, has grasp. Like, what's it going to mean? Uh, yeah, it's just kind of hard because Warwick is, like, really strong level 1 and he has a uh, barrier as well. So if he does go on me, it's, it's still difficult to get a good trade-off on him. He's strong level 1, right, generally speaking. But we're talking yeah. about this game. Like, your level 1, bro, is Riven is fucking good as well when you have Ignite. Um, and this guy running Grasp is a trading champion. You just brought Bone Plating as well? Were you running Bone Plating in this or not? Or you no, running... I was running Nimbus. Nimbus, right. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, you're correct, but his runes, if he has tempo, it's very different. And I agree with you. Oh, yeah. I don't think you win level 1. But he's got Grasp. And you proc Bone Plating, it's fucking clean. And you've got chances. Um, so you've already got, like, Pryo here, which is, like, just super fucking important, I think, in this lane. Because it makes it so free for you now to, like, actually play. Because if he does win, um, level 1 and stuff, then, yeah. Makes it a little bit more difficult. Okay, let's have a look at this. So, ideally, what I want you to do here is to hit this fucking melee. Like, this Q is just pointless. I don't know why you Q her. Because level 2 is so it's imminent, right? for the minion. Yeah, but it doesn't mean anything, though. Because this minion... Even if you miss it, like, who cares? Because your level 2 is off this melee. So if I was you, probably not live coaching, right? Because fucking I'm never going to be in your ear that much. But I'll just tell you maybe to soften up the melee with one or two more auto attacks. And your level 2, you're going to have level 2 with two abilities. Now your level 2 is just one ability, right? So there's one ability you've used. Now you hit level 2 and you don't have Q anymore. So you might as well still be level 1. So the actual, yeah. like, timing of your cooldown here is, like, kind of just a waste. And you Q for a minion that doesn't mean anything. Like, that's just one Q. Ideally, you want to auto attack and then Q, right? Like, that's the best way to get our DPS and stack Conqueror. Now we're just wasting. Mm -hmm. We didn't even hit Warwick. So if you hit Warwick, maybe it's, like, justifiable, but it still isn't. And you hit it you're the champion with all the power here, and you're just wasting it, right, on minions. Right. I watched this VOD um, back, mm -hmm. and I figured you might say something like this, because I, I, I mm -hmm. thought the exact same thing. I should have just hit the melee. But I was thinking at the time, if I just kept hitting the melee, he'd instantly uh, run back. Yeah. And then he wouldn't walk up for my level two. Whereas mm -hmm. if I don't hit it, and then I uh, trade him while um, mm -hmm. like the minion is low with my Qs hitting it, I can like bait him into trading me and kill the minion at the exact same time. And then I get the level two pop, and he's already trading me, and I get the level two on him at the same time. Instead of him just like running back mm -hmm. as soon as, because as soon as I hit two, he's just gonna run away. But if I can bait him to trade me, and get the minion uh, to die at the same time that I'm trading him, mm -hmm. then I can I can get both uh, the trade and the level two pop. So bait him into doing it. So you're right, mate. Like him, like you can bait him here. But what's like you baiting him, right? Is relying on what? Like, do you think a good top laner here is going to get baited by that? Uh, like, do you think if you verse... Potentially, not very good. Of course not, right? But if you verse a top-tier fucking top laner who um, knows you're going to hit two during that trade, like, let's just say it plays out perfectly as you say, right? What about if they just run off, like you said? And you say as if, like, oh, they're just going to run off as if it's a bad thing. Why is it bad if they run off? Isn't that good for you? Well, compared to the alternative, I don't think it is. Like, if I... I think it, that it's more likely that they're going to want to trade me when I'm not level 2 and the minion's not low than if I'm just spamming the minion and then walking up to them. Okay. I think that they'd, they'd be much more likely to... So Even if they're good, I think it'd be more likely to... They'd be more likely to trade. Yes, but in this situation, the minion is not level 2 for like... You know, you're not hitting level 2 imminently during that trade. Like, it's five seconds away. You're not going to trade for five seconds here. It might be like two, three seconds. Probably might even be longer, right? I'm not sure. But it's not like an imminent level two. If that minion... That's why I'm saying, like, if you soften it up to the point where it's like this, then you can queue. Like, maybe you queue through, right? Or something like this. That would make more sense because then the minion will actually die as you're trading through, like, AoE or whatever it is. And then you've got two abilities against one. Mm -hmm. Right? But, so you think I should just like auto attack it once, so it's like yeah, a tiny once bit or lower, twice, and then do what I was thinking, or should I just auto attack it? If if he's still here, definitely, like you can just jump on okay. him. Even if you waste the Q just to gap close, I think it's fine, right? Because I think you got a hard win. Um, yeah. And the point, like, if he is really gonna do that, like you're gonna bait him like that, the bait works if he's fucking stupid. So it's just a mm -hmm. bad way to think about. Well, it. he was, so it worked. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, but like that doesn't mean the player's good, right? Because if a good yeah. like player, you're just wasting cooldowns and the trade like this honestly doesn't even mean that much, to be honest, because we can better it. So it's important. Yes, like the outcome might be good, but if you can better what you just did, like um, there'll be heaps of situations, man, like where you might just like hard win because someone is fucking bad and they troll. Like they misclick or something like this. But that doesn't mean what you did is good, which is like a really important thing to think about in League, right? Mm hmm. So here, just like a minor point, you can think of just like running through the wave, right? There's no reason to stand here. Like he's giving you all this space, so just take it. You might be able to like deny experience. So if he runs off, FD, like this is the this is the thing. If he runs off and you zone him, let's just say he's full HP and that trade doesn't happen, you can just chill here and potentially deny experience, right? So that's like the positive. What, what about the melee minion? Oh yeah, you would come back and get that. I'm just saying like when you don't have yeah. to like come back and last hit, you can just kind of fake pressure him as much as you can. Um... The other point here is like you saying that oh him running off is bad. Like I said, like you just winning level one and hitting two first is a fucking like great thing because it just makes like the the first few levels and waves just free. You're in total control. There's nothing bad that can happen here. So you've actually just like made this super easy for yourself. And if he decides to troll, that's when you fucking react. You don't try to like force him into like some sort of bait. You don't try to bait him by wasting something of your own. Like let him make the mistake and then you pounce. A like full power type thing, right? Okay, so this is all fine, but yeah, if he gives you space, when you don't have to move back to like last hit minions, just take the space. So even here, maybe you can auto attack this a little bit higher. That's like a really minor detail, like it's just fine, but I'm just trying to like throw this idea at you of, um, yeah, like this is not a bad situation for you. Just because you don't get a kill or you don't get summoners doesn't mean it's not bad, right? Um, yeah. What would you want to do with this wave? Um, I think I hard crash it, but I don't think it was probably the smartest play because i don't i kind of linger for like five ten seconds just doing nothing after i crash it so you want to crash yeah yeah okay so like what but i have nothing to do after okay so and and backing probably isn't too smart so this is important bro because you said like you've got nothing to do after backing is doing something warding is doing something maybe if uh i mean you can't really like pressure him under his tower right but you're still doing something if you're not fucking hitting him, right? Which is what I'm trying to, like, teach you here. Like, zoning is doing something. Taking space is doing something. You don't just have to, like, deal damage to this guy or kill him to be doing something. Obviously, that's great, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think I should do with the wave? Yeah, crash. Crash, okay, yeah. Yeah, definitely crash. This is good. Yeah, that's what but, I thought. But, like, with this wave, crashing means doing what? Well, I guess my only option was, I guess the only two options I had was back or poke under tower. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what happens because we don't know like what the, <laughs> yeah. like he might run it down, right? Like he might greed for that melee and you just jump on his head. Yeah. So we don't know if he's going to be 50 HP under his tower after this wave. But what I'm saying is like, if you're going to crash this wave, you crash it, which means you hard shove. So auto attack this minion again. Keep auto attacking minions. Yeah. Yeah, I try fun. to bait him into trading with me so he gets low enough and maybe I can dive him, but he does he's not that stupid. Yes, that's it. Like, he's not that shit, right? He's not yeah. that shit. But what you did there is fine. Like, it's not like you're wasting cooldowns, you E is Q, you realize he's hitting too. Like, that was nice. But I just want yeah. you to shove this properly because now, like, the issue is, is you're kind of, like, shoving hell slow. So the next wave is going to be, like, under his tower and the base is, like, fucking just, it just feels shit, right? Yeah, right, I don't the think next wave, I, it's right I have here. intention of backing here. Yeah, I mean, what does a back actually achieve? Because I get a what's... longsword, that's it. Yeah. I, guess I, don't so think, I probably can't stop him from crashing uh, the bounce back as well because he just heals so much and he's on full mana. Has a yes. potion as well. Yes, yes, yes. That's so the... I'd kind of just opt to not go for that. But if he was lower, I think backing would probably be more ideal. Excellent. So I completely agree. The key here is actually what you said. So yeah, you can buy an item, right? Doesn't matter if it's longsword or whatever, whatever the fuck you're going to buy. The actual key is if you can get back and like stop him from just slow pushing into you and crashing. Now, 
what you said is correct, yeah? Because he'll be healthier and maybe, you know, he'll be... The, the actual key is, like, he'll be level 4 very soon. Like, when you actually come back, that is. So if you base and then you run back to lane, he'll be slow pushing, like, a couple of ways and he'll hit level 4 before you. And it will just have such a big minion wave that you can't hold it up. So you've actually based for a longsword, which means nothing. So while you've done that, the Warwick is based on more gold, right? Because he stayed mm -hmm. for, like, another two, three ways. So he'll actually have, like, an item diff. And unless you recall at that point, which is never going to happen, um, you've actually just, like, yeah, wasted a crash. That's why it's fucking hell and porn here to crash this wave. Like, your life depends on it. So those, like, two, three, four, five, six auto attacks that you could have got, like, extra in on the minion wave means that this wave is going to hopefully come back out somewhere, like, bounce. And if you recall on the crash, right, you come back and their minion wave is not big enough for them to actually, like, crash it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because it's like clogged up here, it's going to build and build and build, and you come back to lane and he's going to hit four. And you've mm -hmm. only got a longsword. Like, it's not a big enough diff for you to actually fight him at that point, because level diff is fucking more important than longsword. Yeah. And a also, minion wave since as he's well. Playing, uh, since he's playing Warwick, I can easily mm -hmm. trim the wave and keep him in lane longer when I come back from the base. Because, mm. one, he has no wave clear. Second of all, he has no. Uh, like, I have a much bigger range advantage than him. He's basically like a Garen, so mm -hmm. if I just, like, stagger my Qs and W him, and then if he E's on me, I just E it. Uh, if he Qs on me, I just E it. I can trim the wave for free, basically, and he can't do much about it. Whereas yeah, if so... it was, like, someone with wave clear, it'd be much different. Yeah, so it would be harder. So maybe, like, Warwick is, uh, you know, it's kind of letting you off the hook, just for not playing optimally here. But even against any champion, FD, like, we're, we're going to do the same shit. Like, if you're against a fucking Darius, if you're against a Camille here, this wave has to be Crash. If you're oh, against yeah. a GP, it, it, you have to Crash Definitely against Camille, 100%. Yeah, against anyone. Uh, I, never see, I never see any Rivens third Crash against Camille, like, before trading with him, and then backing. It's, I don't feel like it's, like, so, such a big advantage if Riven does that. What, what, do you played... mean, what do you mean before trading with them, like? Oh, so, basically, if you... So if this since is Camille, Riven, you can trade. You, yeah, you can trade on Camille pretty easily, since yeah. she doesn't have much range. And then once she's low, you ca you crash the third wave and then come back. And mm -hmm. if she's not running teleport, then you just hold the wave in like not near the wall. It's like in the middle of the wave, uh, middle of the lane. And then they can't do much from there because they're too low, so they have to back, and they can't yeah. use their E very effectively. So eff uh, they're effectively useless if they can't uh, E a wall. And then you can just hold it in the middle of the wave. That's that's what I like to do usually against Camille. But I never see any Rivens do it, like, ever. Okay. Well, the reason, like, if you crash against Camille here, right, like, actual properly, and you recall, the great thing is, like, even if she has TP, is that she's not going to have enough gold for Sheen, which is, like, her ideal first base, right? Which is kind of, like, yeah, maybe true. an added bonus. Um, and against anyone, man, what I'm saying is, like, if you crash this wave, like, if this is GP, if that's Darius or Garen, like, whoever the fuck it is, the reason you crash is not because of, like, the champion it is or anything. It's so you can actually, like, what we talked about before, right? They're not going to, like, be able to build up a big minion wave because you've crashed it cleanly. And hopefully the next minion wave will come out somewhere kind of near the middle. Probably not, like, fully because very few top lane champions, maybe apart from Aurelia, have that pushing power. But Riven is decent enough where the wave might come, like, back out here, yeah? And it's going to be 6v6. It's not going to be fucking 16v6. Like, it probably will be in this game. Um, mm -hmm. So what you're crashing for is that minion wave line on wave 4 to come back out so you can play the game. Otherwise, we're wasting waves, right? Like, we're going to play 2-3 waves in this game without any pressure on it. Any pressure. Maybe you do because you actually do stay. The obviously, like, issue with that is that it's very hard to trade with him because the wave's here. So that's why you crash. Alright. Makes sense? Yep. So I highly doubt like anything is going to happen here. Did that jungle start topside? He was late to lane, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's why I didn't water anything because he was showing bot like all game. Yeah, that's good. Um, I would just be like maybe careful because champions like Diana with red buff, if they start red buff and they hit three, can think about going top after Raptors. So as the cannon comes to lane, you can think about warding somewhere. Um, good junglers will fucking react to it, especially if you're in a lane like. So let's just say Diana goes one, yeah. two, right, and then mm -hmm. three. Who would this champion have to be um, for her to, like, really think about ganking you if you're pushing like this? Uh, someone with a lot of gank setup. Maybe a Shen, something like that. Okay, so maybe a Shen. I would just say... So, Shen, you might be right. I would just say someone who she needs to win early. Like a Darius, like a Set. Because this lane matters. This lane really fucking matters. 
Like if it's two yeah. champions or a champion with um, two combat sums and no TP, if you're pushing like this and I don't see you ward on the minimap, bro, if I'm a champion at level three with red buff and I have mana, I'm going to think about hitting you. Mm -hmm. so Usually, uh, I mentioned at the start of the game, I hop over the, um, the Rift Herald wall. Usually I place an early ward if I think something like that's going to happen, just so I know where their jungler is. And, but and that, if, but that um, ward like lasts what um, ninety seconds, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I see their jungler and they're pathing top, I might just crash the second wave so that it bounces back and then I'm safe from like a gank. It depends on their champions though, because I feel like if Diana's with someone uh, that doesn't have a lot of gank set up, it it's probably not going to work out that well. Because I just E W and Q out and flash with Nimbus if I need to. But if they have like, if I just get Shen taunted, it's kind of fucked compared to like. I don't know. I don't think so. Like in this game, if you I have shove to trade this... into them to actually die. If you shove this the minion wave like properly here, if I'm ganking this, I don't think I can really ever kill you, honestly. Because your level three is so imminent, right? Like off one more melee, you're hitting level three, and as long as you save your cooldowns and use them properly here, um, it's very hard for a jungler to like actually kill you. Like these minions are gonna pretty oh, yeah, much no, count no, as no, another no, champion. No, yeah. So yeah, that's why, man, like you have to crash this, like your fucking life depends on it. Because you'll create a big enough kind of disparity with the wave where it'll actually like count in a like 2v1 pretty much yeah so is there any benefit in slow pushing the third wave then no Never? i don't think so like i don't think there's ever like, like what's the benefit here because the next wave is going to be where if we slow push or don't push hard enough like where's it going to collide where's where will the wave be if i don't yeah like this push? this so the wave uh... four so the next wave line where will it be if we don't like shove this quick enough so well, if we shove quick enough, depends, where will it be? It depends how quick, or how slow I shove it. It could, it, it really, very rarely gets stuck, because like the fourth wave. Would what about this? What about this game though? That's fourth wave. Yeah, it, they've already aggroed by the time the minions get there. I think. But like, this is not a favorable position. This could be. Yeah, bad. no, this is, I just have nothing to do. Yeah, like you've, like, it's it's pretty. If, hard if to it was trade like a maybe a Nasus. It's fine because I can poke him under turret, but here, Bro, if I'm if I'm Nasus here, I'm fucking happy. I mean, first of all, like the Warwick is um no no way, Nasus would be pretty fucked there. I mean, like too. how how are you gonna be like mad if you how are you gonna be pissed if you're Nasus and a Riven's giving you like two free minion waves? Like if you crash that, now Nasus well, has to run it, out on wave it's, four. It's fine if he's on full HP, but when he's at low, he's put himself in dive range, and I just crash if I crash that wave when it's slow pushed. He's pretty fucked because, and he's on that HP because he just gets dove. Yeah, he gets dove, right? But first of all, like if you don't like dive him here off a slow push, his minions are here. The aggro might mean something. Like, why can't you just dive him if your jungler's here with an actual crash? Like, he's never going to contest you on wave three. So it's just like small optimizations, bro. That's it. Like, you can crash this wave if you really want to dive the Nasus with your jungle. And guess what? His minions won't be here. And you do it ASAP and he misses the whole wave instead of like giving him maybe another bit of experience because you slow push it right so is it would it be worth it to maybe do like a a trade instead of like hard pushing the third wave immediately do like a small trade on them to get them low enough for the dive or is it just more beneficial to just crash the third wave and then just dive them i mean here you can even like potentially stand past the minion again right so maybe this is like again like a little um something we can better right stand here because if he does anything to you you quickly like like he's not hitting level two quick enough right like we talked about your level two oh. so he's not hitting level two quickly here so you can actually stand here and if he ever like cues you or jumps onto you you can maybe just like q auto q auto and then e out right something like this and he's like this so i think this is actually like important as well but your goal here as soon as this wave comes is to hit the minion wave so yeah maybe that's like an optimization to hit the wave close to him ask him to fucking jump on you and when he does that's where you react because you've got all your cooldowns but the key here is to the wave has to be shoved. Now, the reason the wave will shove is like we talked about, right? The level one trade. Or like if you're against the GP at level one, yeah? You're going to push because his minions are hitting you, not your minions. So if you're trading with him here, his minions are hitting you, your minions are still hitting his minions. You actually push just as hard, right? As if you were just auto-attacking the wave only. Does that make sense? Yeah. So maybe stand beyond the wave and just ask him, bro, fucking auto-attack me. I dare you. Even there, like, maybe you can, what is it, like, continue the trade, but if he has W, maybe it's a little risky, so I like you coming back for wave, it's good. And yeah, 
hopefully you can like can you see this ft like if you crash this wave you can play the game again like if i'm warwick here and you slow push this like this because you're not hard pushing if you push it like this i know that i'm playing a couple of waves here and i'm kind of chilling and like i said if i'm nasa's bro like you can make it a lot harder for me by crashing this because next wave comes here somewhere now i have to run away from my tower what happens if you just sit here and your jungler's top side like the nasa's can't do anything whoever this champion is can't do anything right right so that's why you crash three um and, and this is just pattern bro it doesn't matter if it's like wave three don't think like that this is just reacting to what's in front of us you've got such a big like advantage here in terms of minions right you've got more than a wave of leftovers yeah and the position of the wave is like so far on his side that why don't we just crash this like we've got so much fucking damage here to get rid of this like cannon wave of his and like i said that next line is going to come back close to the middle So yeah, Warwick's like kind of chilling. Like all this damage probably just means nothing right now. We're just trading minion waves. And even what you do here with the wave, I don't really mind too much because it will eventually like slow push back to you. Um, but yeah. What the fuck? He just wastes his fucking E like this? I know, it was kind of crazy. This is like clean from you, right? Like it's fucking super clean. Like you E away from his E and it's, the spacing's actually like good. Do you kill him or not? No. It's close. Oh, I, I actually do kill him, but not not from Not in trade. this trade, yeah, okay. Yeah, he kind of just ints. Just pop your health pods straight away, yeah? Like, that's obviously personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I think, yeah. Just pop it straight away, but like, as soon as he shows intent like that with his W, just pop that shit. Graze is here, let's go. But can you see, um, FD, like, because we don't crash that wave, like, he would probably still slow push anyway if you just left it. But now, like, he hits level 4 before you, right? Because you're just feeding him minions for free. And there's no actual, like, concrete advantage here. Thankfully, he fucking does this, and I actually think maybe you play this fine. You can watch this back, like, and, and find out what you should do mechanically. I don't really mind too much. Um, yeah, like, this is clean. Like, where you land your third Q is, like, where you want to run, and you fucking E away. Maybe the E... I mean, you have to E, right, to get out, yeah. but yeah. He just ends here. Yeah, because he doesn't have fl he can never like flash. Yeah, I mean it's pretty anything. fucked anyway, but yeah, this is clean, very nice, good base. Grace yeah, can always like just regank. Yep. Yeah. Um. So if I have nothing to do, um, on the after I cra like hard push the third wave. Yes. Do I just do it? Do I just do it anyway, or do I or should I like slow push it? Okay, so or like try or try to try to like bait him into trading or something. All right, so I think against like lower elo players, if I just crash the third wave immediately, I'm kind of losing uh like a point in time where I can actually get damage on them because they're more likely to uh like trade me. But against like good opponents, they probably won't. Yeah, right. So this is the mindset, bro. Like you think, you think in this elo you have to like bait them and play to the elo. Mm. A challenger fucking Riven here, bro, is gonna destroy this Warwick. Because of, like, what we're talking about. Because they're not going to, like, probably understand back time. Is like, you might just stay, right? Like, if you recall after wave three... I, I don't know. There's going to be something here that you can just exploit because they're not going to make, like, the optimal decisions. So, if fucking someone, like, a challenger top goes down from... I don't know. Let's just say they're boosting from D4 up to, like, master. They're not going to play any differently. They are not going to play any differently. That's why they will fucking win, like, 80% of games. They're not playing, oh, I'm in D4, let me try and, like, bait this guy, or let me use my cooldowns in a bad way to hopefully, you know, fool him. Like, that's a really fucking troll way of thinking. Because what about if that other guy is, like, a fucking smurf? And now you've just hard lost, because that guy will 1v9. He won't make any mistakes. So you can't play right. the elo, bro. You're focusing on champion, and that is it. All I see, like, when I look at this, is a Warwick. Right, but, but the point was, is... Mm. If they, if you can't do anything with the third wave crash anyway, like, what's mm -hmm. the point? What, so what, what do we, like, establish? So if you crash the third wave, why is it better than just so pushing it so you have to play the, the lane here? What's well, the it, it opens up a lot more options and the back time would be much, much more clean. Yes. And potentially gives you uh, time to ward. But mm -hmm. if you crash it too quickly you won't have time to, like, potentially play for Scuttle or something like that. 
Okay, but what does that mean? Like, you might, because if you recalled earlier, right? So that crash is going to be like a what? Maybe 245, 250? Crabs are 330. So you can easily get to crab. Mm, okay, yeah, I, I didn't think of that. I'm not sure how quickly you can get to Scuttle, though, like, if you hard It takes about it, 30 I mean... seconds, right? And because you're Riven, yeah. like, running out of base, you've got mobility. So it's probably not even 30 seconds. Okay, that, that might be something to consider then, yeah. It's like, just... The... I, I've never thought about, like, going back and then going down to crab i usually just like like hover and if mm -hmm. i see that jungler and my jungler is contesting it, i'll just like go while the wave's like not too bad well, think about this right if you crash that wave properly let's just say there is a crab fight it's not gonna happen every game but you're not crashing for anything on the map ft like fuck the map you're crashing for this this guy you're crashing okay. because the next wave comes out further right and you're not stuck here pretty mm -hmm. eights and if the enemy jungler's here you have to, like, miss a minion wave. Mm -hmm. you, I don't know, just stand in range. But you're missing gold, right? And this guy's going to hit fucking levels before you because you've, like, clogged the lane up. You're playing to create space for you to actually play a 1v1. And it's funny because when it works out like that, you make the best decision for 1v1, it's the best decision for anything. If you mm -hmm. crash the third wave and you recall and you get a long sword or you get something else, I don't fucking know what it is. But let's just say you get a long sword here. You run to the crab fight. If Warwick wants to fight crab, he's down 10 AD. You should win. Yeah, I mean, speaking. If, if he contests the crab, he's just losing because the wave's pushing back into me. Yes, but he's not losing if he's level 4. He's not losing if you're a level Yeah, down. potentially, yeah. Yeah, so that's why like a slow push is bad for the map. Yeah, I mean, like his, his wave state is losing for him. The, the fight, I don't, I don't know. Could go anyone's way. Um, yeah, go on, get the questions, mate. Let's go. If you've got any I was, questions, I, I, just send I had it. a question, but now, now I can't think of it. Um, That's I was going to ask about the wave. Um, let's say the mm. guy never trades me like at all. He just plays uh, for some reason like a timid Warwick. Yes. And I'm on the. I, I pushed the first two waves. I'm on mm -hmm. the third wave. He's on full HP. Yeah. Do I just hard crash the third wave and recall or what? Because yes, like you said before, he can push the wave back, and then he will get a bigger base. Mm -hmm. Like afterwards a bigger buy yes and then it, and then it feels like i i can't really most of the time hold the wave like he just crashes it back i almost bounce. i almost want to show you this bro but you can do it in a practice tool you are essentially versing like an afk champion right so once you win level one he's gonna back off yeah mm -hmm. and he's playing like so far back so you just full zone him off wave two you don't crash wave two you just full zone him if you get ganked you should fucking want to get ganked the enemy jungle is only level two Wave 3 comes in, around here, like it does in this game, he's still back here. Just remember what we said, stand past the wave and auto-attack it, don't stand on your side of it. Yeah? Yeah. You crash this wave, you're crashing such a big minion wave, bro, like you're gonna have so much fucking time here to recall, right? Because the tower's hitting minions and so is he. To run back to lane, and when it comes back here, you'll probably get here as the minion wave is there, with an item advantage. That's where the item advantage matters, because you crash it hard enough and quick enough. If you crush it slow like this, the item advantage means nothing because of what we talked about. He builds, and he builds, and it's just fucking like the size of this. And you can't fight, right? But if it's 6v6, like we kind of said, you can easily fight. You win. That's how you keep winning after the first three waves. Super important, right? Because otherwise, those first three waves, like you think, FD, the first three waves, you have to kill him or something. There has to be something material. Maybe not material, but in terms of like HP or something, yeah? Like you actually think you have to kill this guy to make the first three like waves or prior uh, mean something. It's not how it works. The rest of the lane should be fucking nice and easy for you. Yeah? yeah? Because yeah. you're bouncing that next wave here, and because you're fucking, you'll be running out at that point, right? You've got longsword diff, so if he stays, you've got an item diff. What if, what if he can still... Uh crash on the bounce back even with an item diff like he was champion strong well you're so the same I... level so it probably shouldn't happen right like it, the only reason that yeah, would but... happen is because of jungle influence so, certain champions I think. can definitely like stop me from so what chance uh, stopping the crash so if, it, if it's six feet so we're talking here bro like if you if you crash this wave so i know we're fucking like i'm just talking to chat here like going on about this for a bit but it's super important right so if you crash, yeah, the next wave again is six against six, right? And it's pretty much like just a fight for prior at that point. 
Now, honestly, because you're stronger, right? So why would you be stronger? So if you crash on Regal and come back, you're stronger, right? Why? Because I get to spend my gold. Yeah, that's it, mate. So and I might be a hmm. potion up as well if I yeah. chunk him. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly. And, and he might already be missing HP. And if he stays, yeah. it should be game yeah. over. Like, honestly, if he doesn't have TP, it's fucked. Yeah. Because you have an item lead here and you are the stronger champion, you don't even touch the wave. You want him to push into you if you're the stronger champ because you can hold it up, right? Now, there are some champions like maybe, let's just say he's full HP, right? Like maybe Volley Bear is hard for Riven, right? In terms of like pushing power and actually contesting him in a 1v1, maybe? I don't know if you played the matchup a lot, but I'm pretty sure yeah, this is difficult. Yeah, it's not that easy. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, right? So maybe yeah. there are some very specific champions where you actually can't contest the wave, but I'm saying like this diff here will fucking mean that I, I didn't even think a volley bear can actually really do anything to you there. I think you're right. more than happy letting them hang themselves. You just leave that wave alone. And if they, as soon as they run into you, you just fucking hit them like crazy. Yeah? Yep. Okay. I'll try to, like, maybe find a um, bot, like, later of that actually happening so you can actually yeah. full see it. I, 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 there's um, other, two mm. other gameplays if this gets, like, boring or repetitive it, or oh bro like i didn't give a fuck about boring i think it's valuable yeah like that's okay. that's what we're here for well there, there was a question i want to ask you about yeah yeah uh, go. one of the other vods uh, well oh, it's, okay, in, it's okay, in another okay. vod so we can do yeah. it now if you want just link it and we'll, we'll quickly do it um we'll... it's it, it uh, i linked you the playlist if you just click the um like the actual link oh shit yeah yeah i see it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god i did click the link <laughs> wow well, it, it, it should be a here? playlist if you yeah, yeah, yeah there yeah. you go uh riven vs cassante because this this happens, I think, frequently. Is it, is it level one? Like what? What's the time? No, no, no. Um, I so I solo kill him, but I don't know what to do with the wave because like. Uh, okay, let's have a look. I, I sometimes get a bit low. I I kill him there, and mm -hmm. then TP's back, and right. I think I should crash the third wave. I could crash the second wave, but it's like really bad. Clean as so fuck. So I try by to the crash way. the third wave. But well, you, well, you have to stay here, right? like, like the... he kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm not sure. Like, do I crash the second wave or do I? No, wait you can't crash wave? second wave because yeah, look that, where that's the third what wave is. So, yeah, yeah. So I waited for the third wave to get there, and then I obviously wanted to hard crash yeah. the third wave. But he pulls mm. it, and I'm already a bit low. And if he starts trimming, I find it a bit difficult to uh, like crash the third wave because I have to like walk up pretty far to. Uh, well, you, you, all the, you do here is just last well, here, minions. right? So we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what so I this do. is this is correct. So the level diff should mean that he can't fucking like really move up here. I didn't even think he'll hit two for like another couple of melees because you've got five range minions. So he's got one more melee to hit two off. So that one was fake as well. Um, maybe even here, bro. This is where you can actually like win against TP chance because after he's TP'd, right? If you can deal damage to him, you're gonna come back to lane on full HP. So think about it. Let's just say you trade and he's half HP after he TPs. And even if you lose like two, 300 HP, it's better for you because you come back on full HP, right, with item diff. And the fucking lane should snowball from that point. So you're correct. You should just last hit these. And this next minion wave, like, I think you should stand up more here. Like, stand here, bro. And as soon as he moves up, you just trade with him. That's what I think. Yeah? Does that I make think sense? I end up doing something like yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, so like it's he loses just, HP, the wave and you come is so back close to his turret that I can't really crash it effectively because if I want to fully crash it, I have to use all my AOE on the wave. Mm -hmm. But it's well, quite yeah, difficult yeah. when it's so push far pushed up. I also have to like not take any bad trades as well because if I take bad trades, then I just have to base, and then my wave wave state is fucked. I mean, like, bro, I don't think there's a bad trade here because you're two against one. Does he have bone plating again? Like, it might be important, but I still yeah, think yeah, you win because of level. Does, does. I still think you win because of level diff, right? So maybe you can time your E for when he... I don't even fucking know that champ, and I'll be honest. But maybe, like, you time your E for his damage. And any trade there, bro, even if it's kind of bad for you, let's say you take 200 and he takes 300, still, like... I mean, maybe because, like, the third wave, you're right, will be near his tower. It might be bad. But I'm just, like, putting this idea in your head that if you, you should look to trade with him here. You should look to trade because of what we talked about before. You'll come back with item diff and HP diff and HP diff will be fucking big. Um, yeah, so all of this is fine. Do you like do anything else to the minions here in terms of damage? You don't, right? Okay, so even that Q, right? FD, so when you Q back through the wave here or... Wait, well, hang on, no, it's a fucking E. Never mind, I'm drunk as fuck. <laughs> Ignore that. I got baited. 
Yeah, so this is all good. I just want you to trade with him, yeah? So auto attack his minions on his side. Don't auto attack on your side here, yeah? Wait, what do you mean? Like what we talked about in the Warwick game. Auto attack his minions on this side. Because when he comes oh, back, right. if he moves yeah, up yeah. too far, then you can go. If he, if he sits back, then he sits back. It's probably the correct play, right? But when he does this, it's, it should be like illegal yeah, for him to touch thing the thing I just don't want to give him cues is the thing. Because if not? I walk up and I auto, uh, auto attack, he can cue me while I'm in the animation. Uh, yeah, okay, but like you can probably even give up, give up like the CS, right, and just hit him and damage him. Because the yeah, HP I, here, if I he usually loses try, it. If, I usually try to bait them by like fake autoing a minion, and then once they waste yeah. their ability, I can dodge it easier, and then I trade on them. Perfect, then do that. Yeah, but it doesn't, I don't think it'd work here. It's because the wave he, is in such a bad spot. If he moves up for like, like once he gets his, will. once he gets his, uh, I don't know what it's called, like the third Q or whatever, it, it, I can't really walk up to contest anything, I just have to wait. Because if okay. I get hit by that, I'm pretty screwed. So this is, is the key to does. this is the key to this sequence, right? Because this happens, right? Because you're not standing here, he should not be allowed to move up here. If he moves up, you just fucking go ham. The wave is already gonna die, right? Like it's uh, two, three seconds. The wave's dead anyway. So you damaging the minion wave, even if you like ran through the wave, right? Doesn't mean anything. The point is like you can get maybe 200 HP or something here. And the wave is still going to be around here. And because you damage him, then you can stand here and fucking zone him off a little bit more, right? D does that make sense? And then, like, yeah, when the wave just, comes here, I'm you get the sure first order. probable this game. Well, it has to be, though. Like, why can't it be? You're level 2 against a level 1 champ. He's not going to hit 2 off that minion because Because he just plays, range. like, next to his turret and hits Qs. And then yeah. my abilities are down, so I can't uh, get any prey on the wave. And then he hits level 2 and then just trims and... It's kind of difficult to play but from there. What about once this... he gets his third Q, I just can't do anything unless my abilities are up. Right, when he gets his third Q, right? But by the point he gets his third Q, you should have damaged him heaps, right? And if he doesn't get his third Q, that's because you're just zoning him and he can't move up in contact with the wave. So, all I'm saying is, man, like, you're probably right, but you're thinking, like, so far ahead. In this moment, you should want to trade with him. So all you have to do is just move up. Like, you don't think about Qs or fucking stacking Qs or anything. The point is you're a level 2 against a level 1. It's it's actually just that simple. So auto attack this minion on his side, and when he moves up, you can just auto attack and then fucking probably even EQ into him. Any trade there is probably going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you so actually like zone him off the here. you zone him off the wave, and you've damaged him to the point where, like he like, like even how, this. How right? am I supposed to trade him here though? Because if I do, if I walk up, I just get hit by. Target. Yeah, you probably can't here because you're so yeah. far back, right? Like you're in Narnia essentially. Like yeah, you should but be like, up. can he just walk? Can he just walk back if I walk up? Yeah, you can, bro, but you don't know that. So you're thinking, like, they're always going to run back or something. Like, we're just thinking optimally for you based on him. Like, it doesn't matter if he moves back or not. You're standing in a position to capitalize if he fucks up. Yeah? All right. Like, I'm just asking the question. Like, don't even worry about him here. Even if he wasn't in lane, it's better for you to stand here. Because when he comes back, whenever that is, he's level one against level two. So you stand closer to him because you want to trade. That's it. And if he moves up, like, I don't know what he's going to do, but if he moves up too close, then you go. If he doesn't move up, then guess what? He's still going to be level one for fucking longer because he's not trimming the wave. He hits two kind of quick here, right? And it, and it might be like a little sketch at this point. See how like he hits this minion, right? And then you're kind of like moving away from him as if you're scared as fuck. And now he hits yeah, two. I and now the wave is a little... Again, bro, like you're... Like this champion's Q, like, okay... Maybe he stacks it and stuff and it becomes scarier, but there shouldn't be a point where he gets three Qs, like two or three Qs for free. Like you've got no HP there and he's level one, hitting the wave for free. So that's what I'm saying. Like you should move past the wave and auto attack it beyond the wave. Yeah? Okay. Now, and you're going to hit like three off probably two melees, even though you've got a kill. It's probably two melees still. And doing what you're doing here is fine. I mean, now it's, now it's fucking just time to go, right? So you see though, FD, like how that trade would mean something. Like your positioning there is actual really key. So you staying in lane and slow pushing wave 200% correct. That's fucking great. But while you're like last hitting, you've got to have purpose with your position. You can't just like sit there and, and last hit. Yeah? Right. So if he, if he doesn't walk up though, is it, does he's it still, still level one. the same or is it just the intent that matters? Yeah, the, like he's still level one, right? Like if he stands all the way back here because you're moving with the minion wave, he's still level one. This, this like melee, watch. This melee, yeah, that he kills, is still alive. He's still level 1 after that melee. So when you do this, right, 
and your melee, like, melee's still alive, and you've, like, moved with the wave. Yeah? Like, what's he gonna do? He, he can't do anything. Now the minion wave's here, right? And he's got his stacks, and he hits level 2 for nothing. Like, there has to be some sort of trade there in terms of HP, right? You're level 2 so against level 1 I for have, 5 like, seconds. So and done a Q combo while he queued that melee. So you're talking here? No, 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 before, before. When he, just before he hits level 2. Like, when he walks For, up here. Well, like, he should, should never I, be able when to he, when walk he up like that, that. When he queues that, I mean. Yeah, that's good enough. But it couldn't okay. be better because you should stand here. Okay. I was kind of thinking that if I uh, queue at him right there, I'd... Mm -hmm. It hmm. fast pushed the wave a slightly quicker, and then it'd be in a slightly worse spot. But I guess it probably wouldn't matter. Yeah, it's so close to dying anyway, which is what I was saying before. Like you're yeah. right; it's really good to think oh, about. I could like buy like a second and a half, which makes the wave come out uh, a bit further. Yeah, it's a it's a great like point, but yeah, I just don't. I I think it's redundant. It doesn't actually mean anything here because it's so close to dying anyway. So if that yeah. was like, I don't know, two three more minions there, queuing through them is fucking troll. Like, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, you should definitely. go through, yeah. like, this. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, like, a concept you can just apply, mate. Like, just playing beyond the wave when you have strength. Whether that's in item diff, level diff, HP diff, fucking, uh, even rune diff. Like, bone plating taken into account. Please do that, by the way, in your future games. Know if they have bone plating okay. or not. Because if, bro, like, you, fucking, you might be playing against, I don't know, built who comes over here. Or, like, a top, top laner, like, Tapoon, right? In a random game. And you get stomped. Just because you fucking went for like an all in and he has bone plating and then you're like shit. Oh, uh, I never, I never go in uh, without like stacking my cues first. Yeah, I, but like, like that's just something that I have to do in season twelve because everyone runs bone plating. If I yeah. burst like Aatrox with bone plating, I'll sit in the third third brush, mm -hmm. hide my cues, and then I'll third queue out on him. And but what I'm saying, if it's like, what about if they don't? Then you actually have winning chances as, as soon as level one. Like, if you can cheese them with... Yeah, I, I can night. still do the same thing. I can do the exact same thing. It's just I zone them off instead. It's the exact same. It plays out exactly the same, really. Oh, you're, you're talking about procking bone plating, and then you move, like, past the first wave? Is that right? Uh, like, you proc no, bone plating uh, with third Q, or...? No, no, no. So, I, I, I can show you, like, a, a VOD of it, but I can just tell you. So, if you, mm -hmm. if you uh, proc their bone plating with your third Q... Is, is this on wave run, one, or...? On wave one, yeah, at the beginning. Yeah. And then you walk back into the third brush, and then you wait for your Q to come back out. And then you keep, like, peeking in and out of it. Yes. They can't walk up because you're, you have three um, passive stacks, and your Q's coming back up. So if they walk back up, they just die, or they'll take a really bad trade. Yes, okay, but, like, I'm saying that's good, but it can be better, because you can probably just all in them right at, like, level one, if you know they don't have bone plating, or if you yeah, run yeah, behind. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true, but... Yeah. Um. If I do, if I do what I said before, I that's honestly how I get like fifth first blood like at least fifty percent of the time in like lower elos because they have no idea about n one Nimbus cloak and how Riven's uh, Q cooldown is. But if I just like walk up and do a normal Q trade, after I do that, they're not gonna walk up again, and I can't kill them because I can't just one shot them from full unless I unless they're really squishy. Unless I do the um the Q thing, the, the third Qs. You predict that flash or them... something? Or... Oh, you're talking about your like, proc in the thing, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It, it puts them just low enough for you to kill them. But if, if I walk up and Q them normally, they don't die. Unless I mean, they're really squishy. Again, man, I just think it's like... like... I can kill so uh, solo Q with Darius's and stuff with it. Whereas if I just like Q combo with Darius, he beats me. But if I stack my Qs, I win 90% of the time. Yeah, so maybe it's, like, champion-specific in that regard, but as far as, like, again, you're just thinking uh, against ELO. Like, that's what you're thinking here. Against, like, bad players, I'm yeah, going to do it, this. Yeah, it, it, still, it still works in, like, high... Like, I watch, um, like, a 2,000 LP uh, Chinese Riven, and he does it, like, all the time, even in, like, really, really high ELO games as well. Okay, maybe, like, we can watch a board sometime and, like, see what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, okay, so, like, in this game against Tian, like... This wave should be fucking crashed by now, and he should have lost maybe yeah. even more HP and should just be zoned, right? So, again, mm -hmm. it's just that move, like, auto-attacking and last hitting past yeah. the wave. I think here I was just, like, really s trying to be conscious to not take a shit trade and lose my HP, well, this, which I ended this up here doing is greedy, anyway. right? So you should just, like, back off after this. Yeah, no, this is this is fine until I do that. That's horrible. Yes, that's that what was I mean. really shit. If I didn't do that, then it was 
fine. You should recall here, though. The funny thing is, bro, like, this looks kind of, like, fucking bad because, um... Okay, you're gonna be, like, down levels, but why is it actually, like, not too bad? Like, why did I tell you to trade before with this guy? Like, hard trade with him as much as possible. If he lets you, that is. Um, at level 2? When he was about to hit level 2? Yeah, so he comes back to lane, right? But what did he use when he came back to lane? Oh, he used his teleport. Right. And so he doesn't that... have flash as well, which is pretty important. Right, so even if you recall here... Like, can you see what I'm getting at? Like, what do you think I'm going to say? Like, even if you were to base, like, why is it still, like, not even that bad? Because he can't... I guess he's just stuck in lane, and when I come back, he'll be... I'll, I'll be stronger. Yes, so what he... Ha most what he likely still be stuck in lane unless he recalls. Unless he recalls, that's it. So he has yeah. to recall here. So if I was you, live coach, I'm just going to tell you to sit here and try to recall. Maybe be back here, because he might fucking do something. But yeah, maybe yeah, back the here. the wave's in a bad spot. The wave's in a fucking terrible position. And you need well, Hecarim to anyway. be here. Yeah, you should back anyway. Because okay. if he if he well, recalls, what if my jungler is topside? Yeah, then you can like help him. Like ask uh, him to help. But why okay. is it bad yeah, yeah, like yeah. why is it bad if you need your jungler to help you? Like what are you sharing? Oh yeah, we end up sharing XP. Yeah, right. Yeah. And this guy is Pretty fucking kinda of chilling. If yeah. that, well, maybe not in this game, because he's low as fuck. But yeah, like if you ever need your jungler to help you, right? It's because you fucked up. It's just how it is. Yeah. So it's important to understand, like, why we fucked up here. But even at this point, you can just stand in that brush and just recall. You're still in the XP range. And if he doesn't recall, you're still in a good spot. And even if he does recall, right? Let's say you recall here, and he just recalls on top of the wave. You come back with an item diff still. So you've got pickaxe. And you've got enough power to still shove this wave if it's frozen, right? That's what I think. Like, you'll come back. Maybe you have to ward before. So maybe you go like this, right? And you just cover yourself before you crash. But you'll have enough power to crash the wave regardless if he matches you. Yeah? Can you say that? Yeah. yeah. Would it so, be different if I was mm. higher HP? Like I just stay in lane and... What do you mean? So if you're both like half like I'm, I'm a bit... You, I recall here because I'm a bit too low. But like if I didn't take that last auto queue, hmm. would it be possible to still like try to crash? Yeah, I think so. I would just fucking... Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know where their just... jungle is. Like that's the only thing here, bro. Like, I don't think you die 1v1 because you've got minions. But um, yeah, it's just jungle like kind of influence here. But whenever you're thinking about jungle, it's because yeah, you probably haven't like managed ways like properly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now like Hecarim's gonna leech experience, and this is the last thing I want. Like I just got first blood; it should snowball. It should just not. I shouldn't yeah, need any it, help at it, this point. One v one. It it it's a bit difficult when they run TP, and I like lost a lot of my HP because I kind of can't stay after that. Mm -hmm. But here I didn't lose too much HP, but. Yeah, thankfully Hecarim's here, but like average. in a, in another game, like what about if he's not here? You have to do what I, I say, I don't think right? it was like, that bad, because the wave was coming back into me. I could have recalled, he can't crash uh, that quickly, but what if, if he's smart, he can stop my back. If he's smart as well, like he freezes this. I don't know yeah, what he but, does but here, the like why the is fuck he, is he just he like hitting the minions? The I don't know. Yeah, I mean like this is just super troll, because you're in a bad position. I think he's trying to like f trim it, but like... He fucked up while doing it. I mean, now he's like just killing yeah, that's the wave trolling. again. It's just yeah. yeah. He's like... trying to he's trying to proc his Q for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So okay, no so let's. Though. This is. I think this will be the last point of D, but I think this will be good, right? Just to full like cement this like mental thing, yeah. So we get lucky because he's fucking trolling. If he doesn't troll, and the cannon is wherever the cannon just was, is on like full HP, like it was. If we make the fucking Chow move to sit here and recall, it's still fine. If we sit here and recall and he does this, you can still come back and stay, right? If he starts trolling. So the fucking Chow move in regards to back timing, where you like stand position, how you manage ways, how you trade and use your cooldowns, will always win. Always win. Mm hmm. But if you're fucking reliant, like if you legit stayed here and you told me, oh, I just mind gamed him to fucking hit the wave, I'm gonna be like, bro, you are fried. Yeah? Like that you can't think like that. Like you're just not gonna fucking I, gap. I think he players. might have thought maybe I'm able to crash or like get a good bro, trade in my minions. Bro, I'm pretty sure he fucking saw like some, I don't know, like you gave him some, transferred some money, mate, or some shit. Like that's <laughs> the only reason he would ever hit a wave here like this. You know, like if you're playing this guy here. Like, how, how, how are you going to hit this fucking cannon like a complete lunatic? Like, now the wave's not going to freeze. And, and if you... This is the funny thing, bro. If you recall here, 
you're right, the wave is pushing to you. He, he is more than fucked. Because you're going to have such a big, like, item diff, right? And if he recalls at this point, he legit can't. Because you can just fight him, yeah? What, what if he um, trims enough mm. and then recalls while I recall? And then we both come yes. back and then we're both even, but I'm down a bunch of XP and gold. Okay, so, like, but you're not, down ex you're not down experience, right? Because oh, well, you I just would got be his cannon wave. wave. I mean. All right, so you also, recall also here, right? I, um... Oh, you go, you go. So if you recall here, this is what we just like kind of said, right? If you yeah, recall, yeah. he has to match, yeah? So yeah, he recalls. What if he, what if he stops my back or just wards it? Because like I, I, he doesn't lose as much as I do from him just do it, like. Can you, ki can you kill him though? Because you have minions. Yeah, 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 I could. That's why I'm saying he just like. Uh, yeah, if he, if he it, moves forward, bro, and. Stop. Well, if he does that, then maybe there's a way like you can actually catch him here, right? I, I honestly like don't fucking know how this champion works. It's such it, a like it, shit thing. If to he say, has but... his um third Q, I can't really. He can right. just like I don't know, like his W just W's out, and I can't do anything. Okay, well, like, we would fucking have to... I, I mean, him, like, running through here, you're still gonna have minions, so maybe there's a way you can, like... That's why I'm saying you would stand back here, maybe. Or, like, just, right. uh, just well, out of range. Like, so I could he... play in my minions, maybe, if you walked up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, as soon as you mm. fucking see him, like, go for something, you can maybe... What if maybe... it's a position where, like, he just straight up beats me if he walks in? Do I, like, walk really far back? Yes, or you just... have to give up. Okay. You have to I, I don't gamble that he's bad. Nope, no, 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 bro. Okay. The, fucking the the answer to that question all the time is no. You do not fucking gamble, because uh, he might just do something good randomly. Yeah, he might turn into like his brother, who's fucking challenger. Might jump on his I, I never keyboard. See it. I never see it. You never see whenever it. I, it whenever I back, happen. whenever I back in a shit spot, they they never do anything. Yes, like if you back here, it's it, it's like something that only like high elo people I've ever seen do. Yes, but like because they're, so, they're so like tunnel visioned on farming. And not losing CS, that they just don't care. Because, like, you're in Fog of War, so they don't see shit. So you could be anywhere on in their point of view. But can you say, like, how that's, like, just a bad mindset to have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm, like, I'm just, I just think if you were to recall here, it's very, very different to recalling here. I think it's very different. Because yeah, yeah. this is oh, very yeah, that's, fucking that's easy for anyone to stop. That's not too, too big of a difference. I was, like, talking about, like, running all the way back to the bush nearest to my turret. Bro, even that like, is even fucking much turret. better. Like I'm, yeah. I'm much happier. Like, with this I'd never, than I'd never right. recall right in front of him, but. But um, does that answer your question though? So like, if you both recall here, let's just say any matches, and let's just say he doesn't fight you, so he wards the brush, and then as soon as he sees you've based, he recalls. Like, why oh, do so... you still not care? So the wave will still be oh. here, right? If he freezes properly, you'll come back, and here he is, right? So you go back to lane like similar time. Why do you not care about it being frozen? So we both we both recalled and the wave's yes. pushing into him. Yep. Um So the wave's still here. I don't know, that just seems that just seems losing to me. Apart if I did like if I didn't solo kill him, which was what put me in like a suboptimal spot, I don't see how that's like ever good for me. Like I, I can't from there it's pretty it's even though I solo killed him, it's still pretty even because my flash is down and he has ghost. Okay, so you just said something very interesting. You said solo killing him. Put you in a suboptimal position. No, it did yeah, not. Yeah, because mainly because he has teleport though. But there's no way it, it did though. It. How, how, how does this make sense? It's a thing I've noticed in a lot of my games actually. If I, 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 I usually try to solo kill them early, but if they run teleport, and I'm low, it's it just it puts me in a really shitty spot. So you I've think you think in this game it was suboptimal to solo kill him? Oh no 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 no! But like because I did, it's like compared to if I just played the lane out normally and didn't kill him. I wouldn't have fucked. I wouldn't be in a, a shitty wave spot compared to if I did kill him. Mainly because he has teleport. Like, I okay, can, if he just sees back to lane and I'm on like 100 HP, I wasn't in this game thankfully. But if I was, it would just be a really, really bad from there on out. Okay, so in this game, I don't care like what game it is, bro. If you solo kill someone, it's always good. You just have to know how to fucking play waves and actually like position and stuff. I mean, it, it's good, but it's not as good as if I could like get the wave in afterwards. Because yeah, I, course, I right? do lose That's a lot right. of I do lose a lot of minions early, and he gets to TP back on full HP. This should be good. Look at your HP, and yeah, he's yeah, level one for like good. ages, yeah. right? But it's it ends up not being good because we don't fucking trade here, and we do nothing. We're just sitting on our side of the lane as if like we're two HP. Mm -hmm. How's he allowed to do that? So that's the that's the big point here, bro. Like that's why it why feels suboptimal because of all this, right? Like now we're just like chilling on a wave and not like maybe auto attacking it. 
And it's all because like you just didn't fucking play towards him. Yeah. yeah also, and now I like take too many bad trades. That that E is pointless as well. Damage. And you yeah, should be I, 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 I thought his um the the smack animation was his Q, so I accidentally right. E'd. That was just a mistake for me. But bro, like there is no way a solo kill is suboptimal. It should always oh, be no, good no, no, because no. I mean, you like have it, it puts, item diff. It puts me in a bad spot, though, is what I mean. But how? So in this game, you think it's bad? Um, not this game. I, I don't. I don't think if I play this perfectly, I don't think this is a bad spot at all. But mm -hmm. if I'm versing like Darius, for example, like it's always going to be close, and he has like I don't know, he has like TP for some reason, and I solo kill him because I have ignite, and he TP's back, and he holds the wave. And how I can he hold the wave can... though if he's level one? Like if you just oh, I mean, him I mean, if if I'm low enough, if he gets me low, because I've been trading him. Bro, you can right. probably honestly like bait him at that point. Like if you're even if you're 300 HP, like you can fucking probably even like kill him like in your wave. Like I'm being legit. We'll have to like go. I mean, it it, it depends on uh how low I am, of course. But I'm meaning like when I'm like really low, like 100 HP. Yeah, then you if, can even with the level advantage, it's just because I could get ganked too. Like he can trim the wave. It it's there's a lot of bad things that can happen. Yeah, maybe. I mean, like, but Darius is not going to have TP, right? And fucking if someone is yeah. going to, like, trade like that and TP back, like, it's not how it used to be, right? FD, like, how it used to be because you could TP on minions. Some people would actually even, like, argue, and maybe in some games it's good to die because you TP back and the other guy's so low and he's used both combat summoner spells, you're going to be, like, level 2, level 3 when he gets back, right? But because of how TP works now, they still have to, like, come back out, and when they're coming back out, you can zone them because you have level diff. But we'll have to talk about this another time, right? But... Um, All right. Do you have any questions like about anything else we talked about? Oh, I do have one more question. What is your opinion on Cull? Mm. Like, I, I, I'd go um, yeah. D Blade, Crash 3 Wave, Cull, Run Back. What do you reckon about that? Um, take it if you don't need stats. So, if it's a fucking, like, really free lane, you can greed, right? Like, Cull is just yeah, greedy if it's a free lane. Because I've been trying lane. that against, like, Malphite and yeah, uh, yeah. tank lanes and I shit. I agree. But if it's Darius or if it's Set, if it's Aurelia, do not get a fucking okay. call. What what if I'm on exactly 450 gold and I don't and I don't want to like? So long sword, sell your health pot, get refill. I don't know. Oh yeah, so, I sometimes do that, but yeah, do that. It's Other better times, than getting cold, bro. Yeah, right.